Good evening, everybody. My name is Corey Rosen, and you're listening to the Story Podcast. Today, I have on a super awesome guest, Mr. Johnny B. Johnny B grew up in the streets of northeastern Baltimore. Times weren't always the easy as Johnny was growing up, but one thing was always on his mind, and that was music. Music has always been a part of his life, thanks to his parents and older brother. He picked up his first guitar at six, and well, the rest is history. Whether it was playing some on his mom's records or playing his own, Johnny was always playing. Watching his brother and his band only fueled Johnny's passion. So, by his senior year, he was already touring with the band Buzz Buster, playing guitar and doing covers. However, originals were always on Johnny's mind. Johnny has now come full circle with his career, from writing his first song at 7 years old to performing with heavy metal hair bands and now back again to his simplistic style of swampy blues and heartfelt lyrics now known as johnny b the storyteller he is not only looking to further his career but to invest and guide the next generation of story storytellers to the path of success he wants to connect with the central pa music scene and help musicians blossom and flourish along with his manager Jimmy Mass, they have created a studio space where local musicians can go to create and feel at home. They offer help with demos, producing, recording, and much, much more. Johnny, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's good to be here, Corey. Thank you. Of course, man. So you said in the bio it all started when you were six, seven years old. Tell me, what was it like when you first picked up a guitar or listened to the <laughs> records? What, what was... What was the record or song that really just grabbed you? The reason I laughed, I was about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, amazing. My, um, I grew up in the city of Baltimore in the row home type situation where it was very tight. So I, we could hear conversations of people next door, you know, that live next door. So my dad um, took my brother's band and started managing them when I was 10. And I would sit and drool on the step stairs watching them play. And I never really knew I'd play or sing, you know. And um, it bit me. Mm. And I was like, I would sneak in the band truck, right? And they get to the job, and I'm like 10, and I'm not supposed to be there. Right. It's a school night. And my dad would go, your mother's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I, I was passionate towards that and you know uh seeking didn't know really how it was going to come out but you know it just developed you know through the years so so at what point did you decide that you were going to pick up your own guitar and start writing your own stuff well um basically um it didn't matter to me what band it was or anything, like mm -hmm. what style I didn't know yet, you know, like where Destiny was going to lead me and how to play. So um, I kept saying to my mom and dad, I want a guitar, I want a guitar, I want a guitar. And I was six or seven at Christmas. I had a, uh, I believe Sears put out a Decca guitar and, and, um, Dude, I played that thing. Even with strings were off of it, broken, you know. And my mom and dad said, well, he's got a passion, you know. Mm -hmm. So my pops, he, um, he gave his life to Baltimore as a policeman uh, for 38 years of his life. And he loved music. And there was a um, music store on Eastern Avenue <laughs> called Petro's, and the owner would... He'd call you a hillbilly or farmer. He'd say, hey, hillbilly, when you walked in, or hey, farmer. Well, if you said hillbilly, he didn't like you much because mm. you owed him money. Mm -hmm. But if he said, hey, farmer. You're in. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad, one time, he really, and this is an amazing subject, too, about the price of vintage guitars now. For instance, uh, my pops bought me a 1961 Gibson SG for a hundred and fifty dollars, right now they're seven to ten thousand dollars. Right, you feel me? Yeah. So, so, so I guess two hundred was one hundred fifty was a lot of money then, and I had my first real like 
professional Gibson or Fender, you know. And um, my hood was, it's different now. I mean, you know, not to say anything negative, but like all the bands in Baltimore at that time, we were all brothers. Like, it was like, hey, man, like so-and-so's having a jam over the house and the yard. And every musician in every band from Baltimore would go and jam. And nobody tried to outbeat each other. And there was never, you had to have these many likes or <laughs> you had to have, it was just you had to have all these followers and stuff. Like everybody came to see us jam, you know? And just like even venues, like uh, uh, back then the Sandbar and the Seagull Inn and, 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 and it's Hammerjacks, I believe, is back now. But dude, people just came to come. And so if they had, like, a bad band, I was like, ah, oh, well, we'll get drunk. We had a good time. And if it's a good band, it was like, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I was, I mean, I was hanging with, I don't know if they'd remember this, but bands like Kicks and DC Star, they were coming, they were just local kids like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Growing up, and um, we were all trying to be rock stars. Right. That was our dream, you know? And um, so I picked up a guitar, and I was jamming uh, with some really good guitar players. Like I was, I was blessed to have um, older guys that took to me. And we would do Almond Brothers, if anybody's familiar with that. You, but oh, we we would do like a memory list with read exactly all the harmonies and learn the different scales. And, and here I am, ten years old, playing Mixolydian scales and double harmonies and stuff. And then when I was like 17, I'd sneak in bars and they'd go, Johnny B's here, you know, come on up and play with us. And we would do like Sweet Home Alabama or, I mean, when it just came out. Right, right. Yeah. Now, I'm older than I look. Don't I look good for my age? But anyway, <laughs> but I, but I always wanted to, I played in cover bands. I loved it. I went through the disco era. And, and and the guys I was with was cool because they took tasteful stuff like um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, um, funky stuff, man. Just really intricate, more than like, everybody, let's dance, get down tonight. If I had a dollar for every time I play that song, I wouldn't even be talking to you. I'd be a billionaire. But, <laughs> get, you know, by KC and the Sunshine Band and the Bee Gees were hitting it. Mm -hmm. So as a blues player, and a rock player, I'm like, man, if I'm going to make a living, I got to play this stuff. It was cool. I mean, it was cool to play, and they're great musicians, but it didn't fill that spot. Mm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I'm 17, touring with guys in their late 20s and 30s, and my principal in Northern High School, Mr. Lutz, even um, my last year, he said, I see your career. He came out and saw us, said, you guys are great. He said, just take the final exam, man. You'll get a cap and gown graduation. So I started touring when I was 17 years old in a cover band circuit in colleges. And I was like, there's got to be more to this, you know? Like, I love the cover bands. I think they're great musicians. I admire them. I learned from them. But how can I go further? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, how can I go further? You know, because that's the kind of guy I am. Like, um, I guess the worst expression I can't stand is the same old, same old. I don't want to be the same old, same old. You know what I mean? And then a lot of people in their life, it's a challenge to them to change. And they don't want to pay the price. And guess what? I can't blame them some days. <laughs> right, yeah, sacrificing yourself. You feel me? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So I started writing stuff, man. Like, I remember, I remember, I remember my younger brother, we got one here, we got two there, we got three. I remember my younger brother admiring me just, playing and singing stuff that came to my heart. Like, you know, when I was like 14. And so um, Baltimore was cool. We, I was in a top metal band too. I just mentioned Buzzbuster, but I was in a top metal band called Deceiver. And we were doing well. We were packing out the Electric Circus back then at Towson University, and stuff like that. And I was a front man I, 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 because I could never... And I admire guys that can play like this. I could never grab any Van Helen. I couldn't grab Randy Rhodes. 
Like I wanted to, but you know, I was more the blues jazzy guy and I couldn't get that feel, you know, one of them tricks and stuff that are phenomenal, but I had a voice. So all the bands were like, will you sing for us? Will you sing for that? And I'm like, so I put the guitar down in a way and became a front man for people. So I'm in a club called Blondie's in Perry Hall, Baltimore, people will know what I'm talking about. And I know that one. Blondie's in yeah. Perry Hall. Like, so I played there, and a gentleman named Rick Craig, who became infamous with Halloween, the metal band Halloween, and Ichabod Crane, saw us there and said, dude, you need to leave Baltimore and come to Detroit because it's happening. Like, there's people getting into original music. Do you feel what I mean? Like, yeah. people were packing out not just to come to see somebody do Motley Crue, which they weren't even around yet. But, um, like, we were one of the first bands that I got in in Detroit. They're called Seduce. And, um, I mean, it's crazy. Like, I think about it now. Um, but... I look back at it like the romantics were coming in our trust room. You know, like, what I like about you, yeah. Right. So they dug our feel, like our metal feel. Um, that uh, Romantics, uh, um, uh, like Kid Rock, mm -hmm. and, and Dave Friedman, who makes Friedman amps. Um, he loved our guitar player, David Black, in Seduce. So now David actually endorses his Friedman amps. But, you know, I was just singing and young and dumb and just driving. And um, well, what happened was, it was the best thing that happened to me really, is they went three piece and the bass player, Mark Andrews has an excellent voice. And I always used to wonder why they had me, but I they had me to be the pretty boy because right. that's what hair metal band, you know, not that I'm not mean in any disrespect, <laughs> but I could sing too, so. So they went three piece and they did well. They went to California. They're in a movie, Seduce is in a movie called The Decline of the Western Civilization Part Two. And they kicked me to the curb and, and left and went to California. So me getting kicked to the curb hurt really bad. Like it, it really did destroy me because I was never that close to success in the industry. You know what I mean? And so I had to regroup. And so I had to find myself. So um, I sort of took a sabbatical on, in music. And then I had a, I had a um, sabbatical happen where I had to. Um, I was laying on the couch sleeping and I rolled over and I put my hand down on the floor to stop myself and a drinking glass broke off in my hand. And I had to have microsurgery where this finger was severed and this thumb was no good. And I was supposed to be like that the rest of my life. And one day, um, I don't know, the universe, whatever the power is to be, um, I went to go take a shower and my hand just went pump. Fine. And I'm like, whoa. But then it was weak. So I had to, so a door for me for motivational speaking. Mm -hmm. And that's where I get this feeling to encourage people. Come on, man. You can do it. You can do it. No matter what opposes you, keep going, man. And I did that for 30 years. <laughs> and then like nine years ago, I moved to Pennsylvania. You can blame it on Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I felt this feeling get back into music again. Hmm. But I didn't want to get kicked to the curb again. You feel what I mean? Like I didn't want to go to the business part. Right. So um, make a long story short, I just started practicing and playing and playing. And I entered a Joe Bonamassa contest with Guitar Center. And I won the East Coast uh, guitarist on that one. And they kind of never went anywhere. I don't know what happened with it. But um, I found out way, 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 way later some guy won it from the West Coast. And something was weird about it, shady, because everything they promised the winner to get didn't get it. <laughs> so I was kind of glad it didn't work out. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just telling my experience. And I keep asking Jimmy, did you hear from them? I won. No, nothing. But um, I said, okay, we're going to keep moving. So I found some bands that were looking for guitar players around Central PA, and I filled in and as a guitarist. And then I started 
writing stuff like again from my childhood, like like about nine years ago, and and Destiny led us right to a Grammy Award reco- uh, producer engineer named Phil Niccolo, um, in Studio Four in Conshohocken, Philadelphia, and it was amazing. He answered Jimmy's email, and you got to have a record contract to get with that guy. You had. And he met with us for lunch and felt this, and um, it was like very encouraging. And he said, "So, uh, when can you start? I'm gonna start recording you." I was like, "Whoa!" And then he sent. We went to a lawyer who did from Boys to Men and people like that, and she said, "You're a master class to act, and you should you should pursue it. You have a good voice." And I'm I'm thinking I'm too old, you know what I mean? And I'm washed up, maybe. And maybe destiny has another thing for me. Kind of fought it, to be honest with you. Like to go back into the music industry, the business, not right. the plan. You know, you it's feel the me? The corporate business. Yeah. Not the organic. Not nah, right. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you know. So I recorded my first album called Who Who I Am with with Phil Niccolo, who his brother Joe works for Sony, and I mean, Phil's recorded Billy Joel, Aaron Smith. Like, you go in a studio, you're like, because ah, you sell these gold and platinum records all over the place. You're like, oh god, oh, I, I gotta play in front of this guy, <laughs> you know? And he was so cool, Uncle Phil. He has us calling now. He he's a professor at Temple University. Oh. Um, his best friend is John Oates. Like, uh, they do like like uh classes together you know for to teach engineering so uncle phil liked this so much like a lot of bands and i i can understand where they're coming from they didn't like other people there but i really didn't care because i didn't really know what i was doing anyway right. and so he had the students come in and you know learn like how to record us or anyone and we, we had a good time with Uncle Phil. He taught me the industry again. Because you got to understand, man, in the 80s, record people came to you. You feel what I mean? They were yeah. looking for people. What happened? But, no, I was just. But I mean, now you have to have like uh, 50,000 likes, you know. You have to be established. You have to be established, which is okay because we've done that, you know. Um, but then I feel for artists, and this is where we're going about helping people mm-hmm. in Central PA. I feel for them that, that, that they don't have the budget to do that. And they're phenomenal. And they deserve someone to believe in them. And that's where I'm leaning to more lately. Um, oh, yeah, we did a show last night in Philly, killed it. It was awesome. It was for Jamaica um, to raise money. For, for the uh, young folk in Jamaica for school and their lunch money. And then um, there was another separate uh, charity for um, uh, kids in Philly that can't afford instruments. So mm. bring an instrument. And I love it. I love playing. I love doing shows. And I couldn't do without it. But um, I'm kind of old school in a way, like the way I grew up and the way I watched the Allman Brothers and Leonard Skinner. And people like that, they formed a family in Muscle Shoals. And, and I'll never forget Dwayne Allman, before he died, he said, oh, no, we're not doing this festival unless you have Leonard Skinner. And see, they took up for each other. Now it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm for you, bro. But it's kind of like, I'm on my own. Right. You know, and used to be more. More family. Yeah, an alliance. So, um. I don't know. It's always been dog eat dog, though. That's why Ted Newton wrote that song, dog eat dog. <laughs> I mean, it's always been that, but you know. But it's civil at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like civil competition. I guess the best thing to put what I think musicians and bands should do is form an alliance, at least. You know, now it's all like, hey man, like I put you on this show, you get me a show, which is okay. You know, it's fine. It, you know, it's cool. Like, I don't care if I'll pay first, second, or last. Right. But but especially for some reason, I don't know, man. Like, weekends in Baltimore were like, people were out to one, two, three in the morning, you know. 
Now it's like in PA, they shut down at 10 o'clock or something. I mean, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but you, right. I don't even like headlining. I love opening because all the people are there. Yeah. Like by the time you get on the headline, people are gone. They're gone. And, 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 and I had to adjust my mentality because, man, the music scene I was in for 30 years, man, people just came, man, yeah, we're into you guys. I mean, I was in a band called Ruckus in Baltimore. Um, Deceiver, Buzz Buster, and and I was in many bands, and we did all kinds of covers. And um, but I was always like, man, look, if these cats can write this stuff, why can't I? You feel me? Yeah. That was my motivation. Like you know, these cats, they're great, but I could stand on the stage with any one of them and play guitar. You know, and be grateful to play for them, and you know, um, so I, I that's the drive in me, and so I even asked Uncle Phil at my age now, am I dried up? I'm I'm a straight shooter, like nah, nobody knows Johnny, but I am, and they know I am, and I'm just gonna tell you the truth, not to hurt you. I even have a song, it's called "Don't Mean to Be Mean," mm -hmm. while I tell the truth, but I don't want to hurt you by telling a lie. Right. So it's worse later if you tell someone a lie. You know what I mean? No, I know exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So, so I'm not gonna hurt you telling the truth. I'm gonna tell it in a loving way. But, um, I think we all need to wake up. Like, I see some really great bands in Central PA. But here's the thing: I go, man, if they only had a singer, if they only had a, another guitar player. But here's the deal: we're buddies. We grew up together. I'm like, well, how far do you want to go, man? Right. Like, somebody needs to say, I'm not cutting it, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, I, I, am I being rude? No, no. I, I agree with you. One of the best pieces of advice that I've ever been given was that know your limits. Know where you end. <laughs> know where you belong. Stay in your lane. Stay, yeah, exactly. And maybe it'll, it'll help them in the direction in their life. Yeah. Because it's hurting them, right? And it's probably hurting you, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, there's so many. I mean, and, and I'm available, and I can sing like a bird. And I'm around these cats, and I'm like, why don't they just ask me to sing? I'd be glad to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I have my project. We We have three albums just sitting right now, and... May I say the cuss word? You said no cussing with okay. COVID. Oh, that one. That's okay. a cuss word. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so COVID came and I'm like, oh my goodness. We had Live Nation still is, we're on their uh, map, but we were ready to tour with Live Nation and COVID hit mm -hmm. and everything shut down. So, so um, I have three out. I just did albums during that time. You know what I mean? Right. Like, what do they say? Uh, make uh, uh, lemonade out of lemons, or make make lemonade. You know what I mean? When life gives lemon, make lemonade. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that? I can't even remember the saying, but I practice it. But, but yeah. And so I just made several albums and. We're releasing them on Spotify and um, YouTube. We're trying to get some subscribers. Um, you know what's crazy, though? Like, even yesterday, I saw some talent that we played with, right? Cats should be torn and known. But they're, the, you know what I mean? It's right. like, it's like uh, what, what happened? Like, okay, for instance, like, back in the day, like, I saw Blue Easter Cult with Led Zeppelin and Iron Butterfly, okay? They lined that up according to respect. Like, how many albums did Iron Butterfly have? They had one. So they opened. So Blue Easter Cult had two albums or three. So they were second. Zeppelin had three. Now it's like, we, we open for tribute bands. <laughs> Just to try to make a living. I mean, we were out in California. We opened for they were phenomenal. Don't give. I'm just don't. I don't understand the psyche of people. Um, go buy the album. If you want to hear REO Speedwagon, 
blast it at your house. Right, yeah. But go see somebody that's trying to do something. To do something with the original music with their creativity. Go see them. So we went out to California, but it's funny though how it reverses because the crowd loved us better. Mm. You know, which is cool. I think the biggest show we did um, was we opened for Chase Beckham, who won American Idol. Yeah. Uh, we opened for him in California, and it was beautiful. We had a great time. I'd open for that. Right. But I'm opening for an REO Speedwagon band, that uh, a tribute band, that the guys play. One guy might play in a Doors tribute band one night. Another guy might play in this. And they're looking at us drooling going, boy, I wish I could do that while we play. And the crowd's going, one more song. And I'm like, we got to have these cats come up. You know, so it's cool. I'm not against that. But shouldn't they be opening for someone? Like that, that. yeah. They can... I mean, am I stupid? I hope I don't get in trouble. No, I, I, I get I'm myself in trouble there. a lot, Corey. <laughs> I, the, I best, do. the best people get in all sorts of trouble. But I'm saying it's not that I'm against that. And then... Let's look at the venues where I live now. I live near Myerstown, Harrisburg, kind of. I'm 40 minutes from Harrisburg, um, hour and 15 minutes from Phil. Now, Phil is a whole nother cool deal. So what's cool now, because we did this show last night, we're going to be, there's a lot of open doors from the show we did last night to get into Philly. I'd rather play there, really. I don't mean disrespect. Well, there's a lot more. It, it, it's uh, just the demand. more they're more create, like even California, like then you know when we tour, we tour, we have toured a lot. We toured all the way down the East Coast and back, and then we toured Nevada, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, California, and when you get in them cultures, they don't care what you play, right? You know, what I mean, it ain't like yelling out cover tunes at you and stuff. Just want to hear good music. They just want to. They feel you and they get into it. And I guess without being disrespectful, I'd like for Central PA to get that mentality. Like the arts, like a creative person like you doing this radio show, man. You're we I appreciate you doing this. Thank it's you. beyond it's awesome for you to do this for musicians. You know, and you need more credibility that you're doing this for musicians. You feel what I mean? And 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 so I think people need reciprocation no matter what they do. You know? Right. Some some kind of like not an ego stroke or just a validation. You so, feel me? So validation. You're, you're doing great, well and it's good that you're doing it. Keep doing it. That's the word. So. The bird is the word. <laughs> the bird, bird, bird. The bird is the But I mean, I'm not here to like yell, scream, whine. Right. Or, you know, cause trouble this is my observation from moving okay you have to understand where i live and what i saw okay baltimore detroit detroit was hopping in the 80s i, I mean so. well because motown kind of still was around and oh, okay and record reps would fly from new york and have to lay over in detroit so they would come to tracks tracks was a was a club where all the record people come and watch. I mean, there was literally tables, MCA, Universal, and there was tables set up for record people to come, A&R people to watch you in Detroit. That's cool. I mean, Harpo's, 5,000 people. Um, there was the Silverbird. There was Bl there was another Blondies in Detroit. It's funny. <laughs> on Seven Mile uh, Road. And now the owner of that owns Harpo's, um, Roosevelt. So... Um, I, the thing that I'm having difficulty with is my hiatus. See, I left for 20, 30 years mm -hmm. and then come back. And it's like, I was treated like a rock star. <laughs> and now it's like, who's he? Like, what's this? You know, but when people hear us, though, and see us, they get it. Man, I'm telling you, I had a young lady did photography work for us at HMAC one night. And she said, I'm not really into that genre, but man, Johnny will grab you. You know what I mean? And that's what I did, like connecting with people's souls. Um, the coolest show I think we ever did in Central PA was opening for Blacktop Mojo uh, in HMAC. And people were actually standing in front of the stage waiting for us. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. We're not playing to two people. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. two people to the, you know, so, but. 
yesterday was really cool because there's something developing there because these two reggae bands and a funk band. It was a cool combination. And us old school terminology, we would be more southern rock blues. Right. New school terminology, we'd be swamp rock blues. Okay. It's like a garbage man is now called a sanitary engineer. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, yeah, I got gotcha. It's terminologies, you know, and, and so all these people developed, we're all alternative. What is that? What does that mean? Well, yeah. Greg Allman will tell you. He passed, but he said, is there an alternative to rock? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's rock. I mean, it's, you know, so even in the 80s, the metal I did, it was called heavy metal then. But if you played that next to metal today, not nah. it'd be... Hard rock. Yeah. Or rock. So you see what I'm saying? So it's a mentality yeah. thing with people. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's just, it's as, a psyche as thing. As music progresses, terms progress. I dig and, it. Yep. I mean, I like the progression. As, yeah. As an older cat, you're going to find I'm very open-minded, which is keeping me alive. Yeah, so you can't be stubborn. And no. So I'm learning the industry now. Actually, you know, I mean... Um, I have three albums. We're starting to release that now. And we have a great um, publishing company from Nashville called Innova. And they like do sketchers and pe big people. And they took us on. So now they're going to start helping us put our songs out. Nice. You know, because we were, we were with an, an, uh, on Spotify um, through my producer, Dan Mouse. And um, East Strasburg, he's a phenomenal engineer and producer, and he's actually working with the Yoda of the business. And if people can look him up, Andy Wallace, like that guy, everything he touched from Zeppelin, he did Smells Like Teen Spirit. Oh, but, yes, okay. No, so, okay. So, so him and Dan just got done doing a top metal band called Gojira, and, and, and you have to listen to them. They're cool. They're from France. And then you'll hear of these other ones, Ghost. And then fuel, and then event sevenfold. Okay. So my, <laughs> so my producer just got done doing them and us, but the people he knows are genre orientated. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, we don't really have agents to, you know, to help you in your field. So right now, to help Johnny be the storyteller, I need an agent. Like I need um, Live Nation's getting us shows, but I'd love to have an agent. That's my cry for help right now. We have we had the financial backing. We have a wonderful recording studio. We have all top notch equipment. And I'm not too bad of a guitar player or singer. And we just need someone. But guess what happened? So the pandemic happens. That cuss <laughs> word. Um the agents that were doing people coming up the ladder had to join bigger agencies. You feel me? So they pulled up the ladder behind them. And there's no rings, yeah. rungs right now. So we're trying to get shows on our own right now and do the best we can. Like, And even, like, they call, like, Live Nation says Tier A would be, like, Elton John, Billy Joel, right. Tier A. Then there's T Tier B, which would be, like, Warren Haynes, Samantha Fish. And then Tier C would be us. So we're on their jukebox. We're on what Live Nation calls a jukebox. So if a band's coming to Harrisburg, a national band like Warren Haynes in our genre, Larkin Poe or Samantha Fish or Eric Gales or someone like that, they'll go, hey, here's Johnny B. the Storyteller. They're right up our alley. And we'll grab them. So that's where we are right now. We're waiting. And that's hard for a musician. I'm just <laughs> sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But you you have to understand about the music industry too because it's almost like the proverbial carrot in front of the, you know, right. and, and but they don't mean it. So you'll hear stuff like, "Hey, yeah, man." Um, so we did this. We did a remake of a song um, from the '80s from Judas Priest. Um, it's crazy how it turned out. We always people don't recognize. We did like a Steve Ray Vaughan twist on it. Uh, you got another thing coming, believe it or not. And it took me months to transition it. 
So the guy tells me, yeah, I'm going to give it to Rob Halford. I'm going to give it to his manager. Okay, cool. So he did, but guess what breaks out? The cat that's going to give it to them has to pick ticket masters now. So the focus on me went away. That's what happens in this industry. Like, people mean it. But then you're taken away. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of got to take that stuff with a grain of salt. Like, hey, man, I'm with the record company. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so um, we did that pre-song. I did an acoustic version and an electric version. And we're still waiting. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting. <laughs> but um that you have to get used to that stuff mm-hmm. you can't if i have any advice for you cats that are younger and trying you're going to hear all kinds of stuff people can do for you and so my therapist and a man i submit to in my life told me johnny there's good ideas and there's ideas <laughs> yes very much so I'm probably not giving you much chance to talk, and you're the guy oh, hosting me. <laughs> a good interview is 80% the interview you talking and 20% oh, me. Oh, We're doing really good. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So, and it's your story, so. Thank you. So um, thanks for having me of for course. that. And so I'm just trying, man. I mean, I'm not trying to be a rock star or be the best guitarist in the area. There's, that's another thing. Like, <laughs> like, how can you say? Now, come on. If you'll be real, David Gilmour, Jimmy Page, okay, um, Jimmy Hendrix, um, even modern guitarist, Zach Wilde or whatever, how can you say they're better than each other? Right. You can't. I mean. You can say they're specialists. Me? Right. Specialists. In yeah, that area. I, I give them that. Well, like you've got a spine surgeon. Right, of course. You got a spine surgeon, you got a brain surgeon. You can't compare to the best surgeon ever. No, man. And, like, I think you need to get rid of that stuff. Like, I'm the best guitar player. Like, but you can't sing worth a flip. (laughs) You know? So, so combined, like, Warren Haynes is one of my heroes. Like, because he combined his voice with his playing. Mm. And that was a challenge for me, Corey. Really? Oh, man. Like, because, look, think about it. I'm a front man. Right. With no guitar. Right. For a long time. And so you never, you never got the I experience. never put it together. Oh. So Phil Niccolo was so kind because of him being a professor. I was blessed that he was a teach, teaching kind of guy that said, man, nah, I'll, I'll teach this guy. I could tell him to hit the road. But, right. But he taught me how to bring my voice Did with my guitar play? play. Now, to be honest with you, and... I hope I don't sound egotistical, but I can stand up to any guitar player in this world. But that's not the point. Right. Can you write a song? Can you do all of it? Can you write a song? Yeah. Feel me? No, I, I know some guys I can mention right now blow you away that never wrote the song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but they can play well. So I'm more well-rounded. I'm more into writing my songs. But I'm not a guy that says, play it like this. With so, the click track and everything behind Well, it. we yeah. have a click track, but I don't say, like, I want this kind of keyboard there. Right. I want this kind of drum. I let the musicians, because they're professional, mm-hmm. add to the painting. Yeah. You feel me? Like, like I don't say, you know, there's some guys that rule with an iron fist is what I'm saying. No, I get So it. I'm real easy to... To, to to get along with, you know, because we let the music talk. Like, last night, I mean, I have a list. This is weird. Like, I guess the level I'm at, I have to have this. I have, we have four keyboard players we can choose from, four bass players, and four drummers. So when we go, we have a show. No, I'm touring with so-and-so. I can't do it. So we go. Get yourself it's in. NFL, like, next man up. So it's kind of like claustrophobic to me because I'm being treated like a local guy instead of a guy to where I should be treated through all the years an elder that has done this a long time. And it, I don't say a lot, but if they talk to me, they might learn a thing or two. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm grateful to help is what I'm trying to say. 
And I really want to lean towards producing people, you know, in our studio. Like, but if people don't ask me, I'm not gonna. Not gonna be able to know. Like we have people right. recording our studio right now, and they're a great band. They're a wonderful band, and they're phenomenal. But they haven't asked me yet, and I'm fine because they're doing a great job, and I might mess them up. But, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I I could insert something, being that. The gentleman over the project's thirty, and I'm sixty-four. You see, I would have never guessed that. I know nobody <laughs> does. Look at me, man. And you know what it is? The creator, mm. period. But um, I have an open mind, a young mind. I love people. Um, but you know, I'll listen to somebody. I talked to my father-in-law today. He's seventy-eight. He teaches me something every time I talk to him. He don't try to, but it just happens. Yeah, it just happens. But some of these cats are so like, I'm into my thing, man. And I'm like, dude, it slowed down. Like, there's these cats I know that want to get the record done. They record all. Yeah, you know, I don't mind recording all night long. I'll stay all night long. I don't record that way. Right. Dear Mouse is watching this. He'll show you, dude. I'll get there one day and I'll get you feel like singing. I'll go, nah. Let's go get some lunch. Look. I come back and sing like a bird in one take. If you keep pushing your body and your emotions, you're going to run out. Guess what happened? I actually seen it happen. And guys go, we got to retake everything we did last night. You know what I mean? So, it's, so I can teach younger people in, in the industry how to pace themselves and be patient. Because mm -hmm. what is it like the tortoise and the rabbit? Yep. Slow and steady wins the race. It does. It really does. Especially if and, and then that, they'll say, that's because you're old. No, there's well, a young guy saying it right here. So Absolutely. No, you don't get anything accomplished by staying up all night, losing all your sleep, getting, <laughs> get, ruining your voice over constant takes, ruining your fingers over constant takes with the with the piano or the guitar. Yeah. You're man. gonna get you're gonna get sloppy form, you're gonna get sloppy everything because you're tired and guess what? Your ears are gonna deceive you because you're gonna think it's gonna be great. Because you're listening back to it, it's great. Because you're in the moment. That's why when I record, I said, don't play it back to me till tomorrow. Exactly. Well, ain't it like when you go to a department store, they used to be like, yeah, they had coffee beans. Mm. So you sniff a perfume, another one, and the distinguished, you sniff the coffee beans to, to re 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 reset. reset. Yeah, reset yourself, yes. So, so I like to be that kind of therapeutical guy that I – could be kind like a papa and say, you're doing great, go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, and, I, I get it. And some people are on a budget and they have to. Right. You know, and we could relieve that too at our studio. Like, we're not going to give it to you free, but we're not going to be a gate. That's another subject. You ever heard the word gatekeeper? Yes. Tell me your, I'd like to hear your <laughs> So a gatekeeper is, <laughs> is somebody who has been in the industry for a very long time and says, no, you can't do it because you don't have X, Y, Z reasons. And it's a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> and they can open the gate. And they can. And they can. They, they, have, they have the studio. They have the whatever. And they won't give it to you because, no, it's mine. Or, no, you're not worth it. Or, no, you don't have any experience. Well, that's kind of Or the, maybe you don't have you know, the, the money. Or, yeah, yeah. You don't have X, Y, or Z reason yeah. to get in. And so that's why we didn't know that our studio was going to end up like this. It's kind of wild. Like, we, <laughs> it's wild how it happened. Like, we just wanted a nice rehearsal space that we could, like, record, like, videos for people. You know, it's not elaborate, but you don't need much. You don't need much to make you, it look good. Look at us it. right here. We're in a little room, and it looks cool. So you you know how. Yeah. You know, so we, we and, not, and we could have some private parties at our farm, like, with VI people to see the bands. We already had one. It was really cool. We had Ben Brandt, the Soul mm -hmm. Miners Union, Jeremy Edge Project, and us. You have to check out Jeremy yeah. Edge Project. Oh, very good. I mean, they, I, Jimmy and I went up, and there, there's, there's similar bands like us, and we're far and few in between this area. There's Dustin Douglas and the Electric Gentleman. There's Gabe Stillman, and there's um, Ben Brandt, and there's Jeremy Edge, and there's us. I haven't found anyone else in our genre like like us. I'm sure there's many more, but 
I haven't found them yet, but I like to help them in our studio. Like if you know, like Ben Brandt, mm -hmm. they fell in love with our rooms. Like if they go, we didn't know it was going to be that kind of room. Okay, so so the drummer Joe, I, Joe's cool man. He goes, Johnny man, can can I do some like jazz tracks? Because he does jazz too on you know, keep his chops up. Joe right. Shadis is a phenomenal drummer for Ben Brandt. Ben Brandt's a phenomenal guitar player and singer, and, and, and they're a phenomenal band. And I love them. So they're recording out our studio right now. On um, Tuesday, they're going to continue. The, well, here's the hot I'm getting ahead of myself. So I go, okay, Joe, come on, man. We'll end it up when their engineer came and heard the room. They went, we're going to do a whole album here, man. This room is amazing. So you can have all the equipment, right? But if you're not soundproof, like, we didn't even know what we was doing. We have the fusion. We got that from um, Jamie Furman, a drummer that's on our list. He he said, man, you need some diffusion mm -hmm. uh, stuff to diffuse the sound. And then Dan Mouse taught us that from Soundmind. And so this guy, this guy, Shane Moore, who is a very well-known engineer, and he's very well-respected in the industry, he came to our little humble house. It looks funny. I mean, it's a rancher house. It's a typical Pennsylvania rancher house, three bedrooms. And we took the whole basement though. You walk through the door, you go, oh, <laughs> it's like, hallelujah. Cause you go down you're like, what a dive. I mean, cause you gotta right. walk through our garage and then go down the stairs. Yeah, right, right, and we right. call it the swamp on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I mean, they get in there and go, whoa. So they're doing an album now because of the room. He even said he has, like, like we've heard people that engineers go, man, I know guys that work at big, and I'm going to mention them because I don't want their trouble, but big, big recording studios, they go, but your room's killer. And one guy said, I can record free at one of the top recording studios, right? But your room's better. Right. It, it, it's the sound. It's the room. So Ben and them are recording a whole album, and I'm like digging it, man, because I'm loving hearing them. And me and me and Ben went nuts with amps. Like we had like, if you look on my Facebook, Johnny, be the storyteller or the swamp, you'll see we had eight amps lined up, like <laughs> Dumbles, Vintage, and Ben's going like a kid in a candy store. Man, which one, man? Ever? That's what it's all about, you know, getting that tone and that feel. And I'm excited they're recording an album. You know, they're, them, them boys are going to go somewhere. They're going to go somewhere. Yeah, shout out to Ben Brandt and the Soul Miners Union for sure. Uh-huh. And, and, and so, um, for sure. We have a song called Fo Fosho. F-O-S-H-O. Fosho, Ben. <laughs> so, Good Guys, Jeremy Edge Project. They just played Sellersville with Joey Ho-Ho. Like the Ho-Ho tour, Joey ho mm -hmm. And it, it was packed out. Jeremy's, got, they got a brand new album out. I've been posting it, sharing it. You know, it's, that's what I mean. I want to, I want to help whenever way I can help. Well, let me tell you what I'm. I'm a roots guy, like roots reggae, Americana, blues, rock. You know, and I don't want to lose that. Right. We were laughing last night. We had a couple beers, and we we're going. Do you want a robot to take your place? I said, No, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's something isn't it something you're a younger man isn't it something about live music how do you let me tell me how you feel when you see like a live musicians really getting down like, it's unreal uh because i only been recently this is a fact that many of you probably don't know i've only been out in a live music scene for about a year can't uh, tell that yeah you can't tell that but it's so incredibly good appreciate that, your passion man yeah you got an education 12 years in one year, huh? Yeah, I did. I really did. So tell me about that. Like when you see nine musicians, how do you feel? It's it's another – so you have like – I like sound. I'm a sound guy. Cool. I love sound. You're a tone guy, man. I, yes. I love all of that, and it's completely different when you're listening to Spotify or the radio because you have all of the, the lost – you know, you have the digital and then you have the organic. You have all the <laughs> digital stuff that gets. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Cuss word. Right. No, I'm joking. Well, <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. But you lose all of the, the authentic, authentic, they, authenticity. The, authenticity. Yeah, the authenticity. The uh, There's so many samples that you lose through it. And there's so many. Even the 
community aspect of you look at a musician, look at that musician, and they, and there's something happening between them, and or the the front man that ha- has their hand out here, or or you know they stomp their foot, and that means something else that everyone else just catches on, and it's like look oh, at that. There's something actually happening here, and actually being a part of that now. I could I know that look, I know that uh that head nod, I know nice. that the, the the hand motion. I or wish whatever. there was like a million people like you, yeah. brother. Of course, it probably is. It's 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 almost like a cult, but it's, it's hey. but it's great. It's a you, good. You get to see it, but you, get, you appreciate creativity. Yeah, and, and it's, it's soul. Never, it's more yes, like it's like soul. I told people like I've had many combinations of musicians. Right. We were called, and I'll, I'll say this: JJ Gunn, with two N's, and we were getting a big name, and the algorithm set us shut us down because he kept insisting we were a gun company. Right. No lo- joke. So people go, yo, you're full of crap because I hope crap when I cuss word. Said you're full of crap because what about Guns N' Roses? I said, what about them? They don't need no media. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> I, just mean, it's like, I mean, you know, LA Guns, what do they need anymore? Right. All they got to do is put up a poster and everybody shows up. Exactly. But people like me, I'm in a difficult spot. Like, I, I guess you would call, like, I'm at a hoping a scout from the NFL sees me and, and as a mm-hmm. as a semi pro but then you already know you're a pro right it's a it's hard on me emotionally it really is and some people don't understand when i like maybe um i'm not a mean guy but sometimes i express myself i'm the kind of guy like i hold everything in it all comes out oh my lord and i'm trying so hard to express it as i go but then with some people, when I express it as I go, they don't care anyway. So until you blow up. So, right. <laughs> but I'm really working on that. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, if, if, if folk would just like start, I don't know, maybe society's so quick now and people are so busy. Has it, you know what I mean? It changed, it's, it's right? gratification culture. Say that again. Instant gratification culture. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You just educated me. Yeah. It's like, like you, explain that a minute. Like, so you got, so TikTok is a prime time example of this. Uh, if you did, don't know you just cussed on the air. Right <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. If you don't know what TikTok is, it's, a, it's an app where people post 30 second to a minute videos and you could just scroll really really fast oh my goodness and so it's like this short bit content really quick instant gratification instant feel good instant feel bad then they're done and then they're done exactly and it goes away so that's and so you got to come up with something weird again you got to come up with something weirder even more extreme or (laughs) even crazier or you are just kicked to the curb bye-bye bye-bye i don't feel this way anymore because you're suck now Uh, or whatever and people, there's actually been a really it. cool in, uh, some studies into this, uh, how this is affecting hu- really? humanity. Really, say that, man. Uh, like, because the average human is losing uh, lower is lower IQ levels, lower attention span, low, lower patience, I see lower etc. 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 Because they're waiting for one minute so, to get their so gratification. We're gonna play a new song by Johnny B. That was great. That was that, that was amazing. <laughs> we should do it again. It should be even shorter next time. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. And pe- oh. the problem is that because... Right there, gratification. Yeah, there. right there, gratification. And the the bigger problems are is that people are lacking five-year plans now. They they can't see what's coming ahead. They don't oh. see that, oh, if I do this, this leads to that. That leads to this. People can't play chess anymore with their lives. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They can't build up wow. anything. Because they're getting this instant, instant gratification. They don't have time or they don't so want what's to. next so like, what they, yeah they don't have that dude it's almost like being a drug addict exactly it's, it is exactly like what way way dopam- way dopam- but chasing addiction. that first high yes it's exactly it's, it's chasing dopamine Woo. and for those who don't know dopamine is the happy chemical in your brain Woo. yeah that's a, dude i i just learned that's cool because that that helps my psyche feeling why do you think there are less than two-minute songs nowadays that are getting all pops? Right? The only less than two-minute song that I have ever heard before recently was Fortunate Son. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Have mercy. Wow. I mean, but then you go live up in this area. 
We love jam bands. No, oh wait. yeah, I don't get it. Like absolutely. Well, yeah, because well, it's different when you're in person. That's our you point. Have that's to be our there. point. Yeah, and when you're in person, it's always in instant gratification because you're watching it happen, mm-hmm. and you can't. Well, you can't leave, but you can't leave because you're being pulled in. Gotcha. But on your phone, swipe, swipe, dude, swipe. Tired, whatever. <laughs> whoa i get it so um where do you see the industry going i mean like with all that i've there is a giant push for live organic music again the people are hating on these big corporate uh, machines that are churning out this is good to hear that i'm that's what i'm seeing people granted so uh, you believe there's a turnaround i believe there's a turnaround coming because spotify is great but you ain't gonna make jack on that right well there was something i heard about metallica they had um seven billion hits like views or whatever you call Mm -hmm. it on spotify i'm not real well have young guys to take care of that but I'd like to know, right. but they had seven billion, and they got now to me seven hundred grand, a lot of money. But for seven but in that billion ratio, hits? so now they're fighting. So I, I go Metallica because now they're. Yeah. I, we I need to. I, I'm praying there's a revolution because I look. I just found out like, dig it, Billy Joel mm-hmm. in Texas, right? Eighteen hundred dollars for a nosebleed seat. Five grand, for yeah. The floor. But but you know what's terrible? They're making Billy Joel look bad. It ain't him. It's not him. You know what's going on. Yeah, the ticket masters yeah. are, are yeah. milking everybody for their money. Yeah, well, they're about to get their milk. Oh yeah, hide milk. Oh, that, that happened with <laughs> Taylor Swift. That happened yeah. with so many other people. I was surprised that Paul McCartney, you could get a ticket for five hundred bucks. I was like, really? Yeah, I was surprised because they could have jacked that. <laughs> they could have jacked that all beyond belief. Five grand or something, man. Yeah, right. It's get... almost like the World Series tickets. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, these musicians are not the people to blame for their ticket. Prices. That's what I'm trying to say, and I hope everybody hears that. It's not. It's not the musicians. Billy Joel would be like. You know, he ain't going to get all that. No, Billy, <laughs> Billy Joe's already have his money. Yeah. it's He doesn't need more. So, like, tier A would be, and even Elton John's announcing his kind of retirement, too. You know, I, 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 I mean, my I daughter know. goes, my daughter and wife, I love it. They, they love Harry Styles. You know, I think he's phenomenal. I think Harry Styles is a very talented man. And, like, my son and I, like, let me go back to Justin Bieber. <laughs> all right so my my daughter had a full size poster and we go by and punch it <laughs> right and then my daughter said dad just watch the movie believer and i did and i was like i'm so sorry that kid his story's amazing justin bieber and so even like like harry what i dig about harry styles he still respects guys like me yeah you feel what I mean? Yeah. Like, 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 I can give you an instance. The COVID Grammys. This is a wild story. So, we were JJ Gone at the time, Johnny V, the storyteller, still the same guy. We were in Malibu, right? And we were doing shows up and throughout California. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, we found out that. Um, Malibu is very creative, a very cool place, and um, so forth. And so we went to Ma- um, this pier. That's why I hesitated. It's a famous pier. Um, Monte- I wish Jimmy was here. He knows the name of it. It's a famous pier down. Uh, you keep going down away from Malibu into um, Santa, it's a- Santa, Santa Monica. Monica. Pier. Yeah, East. thanks, Jimmy. So Santa Monica Pier. So our drummer was out there, and this guy was out there playing, and he gave him a CD. Now, this is cool. So then my daughter, Mackenzie, says, Daddy, let's watch the Grammys, because Billy Ellis, and, which I think she's phenomenal, and Harry Styles, and blah, blah, blah. Well, the very band called Black Puma was the band we met on the pier. And so Harry, if you saw Harry Styles, Black Puma's very root. R&B, very mm-hmm. rootful. 
not the pop, right? You know, that everybody's trained to like. <laughs> right, that's a whole. I, other I won't repeat that. That's a. That's a whole nother bottle of whiskey. It's a whole nother bottle, yeah. It's a <laughs> so, whole but podcast. another message, but yeah, <laughs> but um, you looked at Harry like they put the, you know, the the, the camera on him. He was looking at him like, wow, you know, cool. So I hope that I. I'm not trying to change young people where they're going, but let's get some soul right into it. Like these backing tracks, like, you know, I, I use them. Yeah, you know, Alex is, he loaded up a blue box for me, you know, but, but actually the guy that the show last night, he goes, please don't do that. Please bring your musicians. So I dug that, that someone actually asked, in a kind way, Johnny, don't just you and the tracks. Right. So I'm feeling there's a turnaround. Um, there is. There is. And uh, something that's always bothered me was backing tracks as well. Because it's... it's it's. How did you feel about that when you would go? Oh, like, so, it feels so fake. <laughs> it, it, I, feel, I feel cheated. <laughs> I do. I came out to see musicians, not... Not a radio station with a live singer. <laughs> I just need to see. I want to come out here and see karaoke. <laughs> there you go, professional karaoke. Prefer, professional karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you and I could talk all night. Like, but I think it's just a lot of how. I think if a lot of musicians are listening to this, they, they're getting some answers, like some feel, like, you know. And uh, I really appreciate. Uh, the show we did at HMAC with Blacktop Mojo, um, we met Chris Ryder, who is a photographer for PA Magazine, and Greg Knoll, and they really loved this, and that and that made me feel good that maybe we're actually, you know, being pretty well a little known in the area yeah. because we've always based out of here, and we're we're pretty well known in the upper desert of California, Austin, Texas. Um, I love Texas. And and because they they're another group of people that dig they care yeah man they really Texas folk man well think about it who came out of there think but about being ZZ think, Top Stevie Ray Vaughan think of every stereotype of Texas and you understand why yeah they <laughs> just they're really serious about yeah. like music and coming out and getting into I don't know if people actually dig into like here's a cool new band coming up or. Let me check it. No, say they're listening to Joe Badamasa. Okay, so we're kind of on Spotify. Like if, you know, we're connected to that mm -hmm. uh, algorithm, whatever. Well, like the other day I was listening to Samantha Fish. And man, all these groups like her came up I never heard of. I found out who they were. And they're really, really good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're the people that need it more than Samantha Fish right now. I mean, not that Samantha Fish don't need shows and she don't need, you know, to make a living. But these you are upcoming I mean? artists. Yeah. And yeah. like, but, but because of the pandemic and all that, the rung, those rungs of the ladder, because they're doing tier A now. I was on the phone with a gentleman in Live Nation. Bruce Springsteen was on the other line on the speakerphone. He goes, when am I going to get a show? That was about a year ago during COVID. See what I mean? It shut down. Like mm -hmm. the, now I'm, I'm very encouraged to hear that Live Nation's booked 91 tours in Europe for 2023. So that's encouraging. But um, Bruce Springsteen was impatient. I knew people, and I'm not going to mention her name, but that are big like him, were driving Ubers. Like we went down to Nashville. Yeah. If you don't have shows, that's another thing people got to get. Because of the digital platforms, you don't make money. The right, way yeah, a, the way course. an artist makes his her his or her they or them's living is they have to play shows and sell merch. Yes. Like, that, and like feel you me? said, do you feel musicians me? Musicians don't make money off their tickets; they make money off their merch. They do, and and see, um, that's what I'm getting at. So. If you don't have a show, you ain't got money. Now, now these people that drove Ubers, they still had their money. Of course, right. Um, like I was blessed to record with Joe at Joe West Studio, who, um, who uh, actually wrote 
uh, Keith Urban's hits and Toby Keith and Shania Twain. I was in his studio recording, and it was really cool. I'm, I'm, if you look at one of my profile pictures on Facebook, I'm on a motorcycle. It's not mine. It's Joe West. <laughs> and I, behind it's these gold, rec- they're Shania Twain, Toby Keith. And I actually bought Keith Imp- Urban's amp, one of his amps. That's pretty cool. But them cats were shut down. You know, they were shut down. So now venues now trying to get, here's another point. If you're an independent artist, um, trying to find venues that are open now. Because mm-hmm. they shut down. They shut down and they're not really back yet. Or they're, they're not there at all. Right. Right. And they're, I, I heard there's some, a lot of Mar coming back around. Like, I heard some good news about, it used to be Galipskis or Galips, Galips, how do you say that, Jimmy? But Galipso? What? Galimpies. And so now they're called the Underground. They're open. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool news. They were shut down. Um, So. Thriving the Dragonfly was uh, another one of those. Uh, local Lanc- Lancastrians when they're uh, J.R.R. J.R.R. Tolkien themed. Really? Venue. Yeah. Nice cafe. Cool. Did and, they close down? Uh, they were they were done. But then they uh, got the money and came back. And they're doing that's really cool, well. man. Check out that place. That's a great place, dude. I tell you a lot. Of, I had I took my wife. Um, we don't get this much weekend a couple last weekend to Rock Lidditz mm. Hotel. It was really cool. What a what a facility, man! What a campus! Yeah, they Woo! got a, they got a lot of. Well, stuff I'm looking there. out the window and I go, and there's this big yellow Studio One, like, yep. and I'm like, it's we're we're three stories up, and it's higher than us, and and <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? And then there's another one next to it, so I'm, I went down to the bar to eat a drink, and I started talking to a gentleman that works for Rolex. I didn't even know there was a Rolex. And lit it's a major Rolex company in right, lit yeah. So he's really cool telling me about yeah, Lady Gaga was just sitting at the bar two days ago here. And so they fly in and they do their yeah, shows, think, they yep. they do their audition. But they they when well, I audition, they rehearse. Yeah, people don't know show. this, but Lidditz is a up and coming oh, music. They should hall. know it. Yeah, it's a beautiful feeling, that It is. It's, it's and people don't know what understand what the hotel rock or what what rock lit it is. Well, it is where all the A listers come in to rehearse, <laughs> and then they then they go out to do. Their you could just shows. go to a room there one night and meet Ozzy. Ozzy Osbourne was there last week. Exactly. So I mean, I was there. Now you <laughs> <laughs> go meet me. I told the guy. He goes, "This no." He said, "Yeah, man, Lady Gaga was here two days ago." Well, I'm here today. He, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm. I mean, I'm not anywhere near that yet, but um, I think we got some potential and we got some light ahead of us. Um, we're we're actually probably like a lady really blessed me yesterday, man. She actually was friends with Warren Haynes, and mm. um, she she said I went to a concert, and long story short, her son got backstage, and they had like um, uh, all kinds of stuff. For kids to do the kids that were on tour, like like Warren Haynes's kids, or right, they, yeah. they had like she said they got into a water battle back there, and she goes, "You're so much like Warren Haynes or one of the Van Zants." She said it's amazing, she, and it, it was a great compliment. I mean, and, and she goes, "You remind me so much of your presence and your and your real Southern rock." Like, um, there's not many. Like, there's I'd like to. If Blackberry Smokes listening, <laughs> I'd like to hook up with people like them to tour with, um, maybe to help me, because um, we're we're like a modern though. We put funk in there, like we're not right. We're not like Sweet Home Alabama, but we got this funky, cool groove, you know. Let's actually give them some of what you what you guys got. Tremendous idea. So we have three of you, your songs. We have Hot on the Trail, Can You Hear, or Shepherd. Which one do you think would Play be? Play Shepherd. Play Shepherd? Yeah. Tell me about Shepherd. Shepherd, okay. Um, Israel. Um, my friend said he was on a bus in Israel on a tour bus. And he said that it was amazing. The driver stopped and said, let me show you something. So 
they stopped by this beautiful, you know, coarse field, and there was all these sheep. And mm-hmm. um, there was all these people ranting and raving and yelling behind these sheep. And they were driving them to go get sheared. Mm. So they're like, go, oh, yeah, yeah. And like the sheep are scared and they're running. Right. And all of a sudden, bro, on the hood, on the hill, you see a shepherd. And them sheep, when they got to him, just laid down and went right to get sheared. So, so there's drivers and there's shepherds in mm-hmm. the world. I'd rather be the shepherd. So I was like, okay, I want to give alms to all the shepherds out there. And then in my native side, my mom was Choctaw native and my dad German. My mom always said, you got your dad's outward, but you got my inward. And so that meant a lot to me to, 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 to think about there's drivers in this world that you feel like you're, they're going to hurt you, but they're driving you to be sheared to help you. Right, yeah. But then the shepherd's there to that calm you. you feel safe. Yeah, and that's what it's about. With that said, this is Shepherd by Johnny B., the storyteller. Thank you, bro.
that was Shepherd by Johnny B. The Storyteller. Where can people find you and your music and everything else? Um, I believe my manager's here is Spotify. Guys, Johnny B. The Storyteller, Spotify. And dot com. Your website? Oh, yeah. Johnny B. The Storyteller dot com. And that is J O H N Y. One N. One N. Um, B. The Storyteller. That's it. And then you can YouTube. So, yep. So what is next for you in this coming year or in this coming season? Um, we have a show December 10th in Harrisburg at HMAC. And it's actually with Ben Brandt. Oh, yeah. And Honors Union and Jeremy Edge and us. So, so if y'all want to get your blues on and your shoes on, it's <laughs> <laughs> dance shoes, you ought to come out to HMAC December 10th. Dance on down to H Mac. Um, you gotta check out. Have you? I assume you've heard of Roots and Blues. Who? Roots and Blues, the uh, festival that goes on here every year. I've heard of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should get. In contact well, that's with that, dude. that's the thing I like. It's that's been the challenge. Like we need to find out about them kind of things. And I'll help you with that. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, we've been trying to get in Roots and Blues too in Lancaster. I don't say it like y'all, but. Lancaster, because there's also a, a Lancaster, uh, California, England, England too, and La- England. Yeah, yeah, more importantly, England, UK. Yep. Um, we're gonna go into some general questions that we have now. First off, we have a question from the audience, Miss uh, Dale Griffith, Johnny B. What is currently your absolute favorite single go-to on guitar, that be electric or acoustic? Well, um, I have to explain my process. All right. If that's okay. Um, in the morning, I go right to my Martin little acoustic and um, just start uh, playing without a pick and mellowing myself out. And I have to psych myself out to, to reward myself. I see. Okay? So I go to the least ugliest sound or tone that I have available. Which, and then I leave my home like I have a little studio at my home with my family, and then I have the uh, the swamp. And so then w- by the time I do my acoustic, I'm like dying to play my electric. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not that, no, acoustic is so cool. Like, yeah. it, like I lo- I'm leaning more to acoustic than ever anymore. Um, it's more percussive, mm-hmm. you know, and I dig percussion. But, more tribal almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But so 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 I this is just my psyche. Right. I'm not saying this is the way to do it, man. You might, you know, miss it or go, no, it's follow me. But what I'm saying is so I go at my drive is seven out seven miles to the studio through beautiful farmland and I have a little break, a reset. So when I get there, I'm like I have I have a lot of guitars, okay. So I'm not bragging. I I don't even I lost count. And but um, I had a lot of Les Pauls, Gibson Les Pauls, and I love them. But they're so heavy. <laughs> yeah. I, I toured with them, and I I actually had to go get medical attention for my shoulder blade. Oh, wow. There was I mean, when you're lugging 11, 12 pounds a night, you know I don't. Oh. Some some guys can do it. I just don't dig it. Uh, the tone is unbelievable, and that's why they do it. Um, but <clears throat> so I'm like, how can I get a Les Paul sound? So this gentleman, Moe's Guitars, he became our friend. Um, he introduced me to a guitar called a Warrior, like a Warrior. Mm-hmm. And this gentleman in Georgia said, I'm going to make the Les Paul lighter with the same tone. You know, I mean, that was his journey, and he did it because Rick Derringer. I don't know if young folks know him. He was a guitar player with Edgar Winter, right? With Frankenstein, da 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 da. Tremendous guitar player, very underrated. He should be talked about way more. Yeah, and so he has one. I seen his video, so I got two of them. Um, but I don't play them anymore because this SG. I, I play slide guitar. Okay. So to me, the more frets, the better. You know, and so with slide, that's why Derek Trucks plays slide, slide on an SGE too, because it has a couple extra frets. Mm. 
But I even go up to the pickup and do octaves and stuff. Wow. And come down. And um I think skill. It does. Um signs signs not it's it, it's cool. It, the hard part is to get vibrato. Like I wear it on my pinky because that's what Johnny Winter told my dad to tell me. So I got to free my cording up. Now, mm. t- now, now, Mr. Trucks is blessed to have a whole band. He can just put it on the middle finger and just play slide. Do whatever he wants. I yeah. got to play rhythm, <laughs> yep. lead, slide, sing. <laughs> so I wear on my pinky, you know, and it's a technique. So when you're in the fret, the hardest part is to get that cool vibrato without yeah. going sharper and flat. And that's the trick to it. And I'm still mastering slide. I love one day to master it. Um. I could I play slow hand leads because my hand. So mm. I used to play like Al Demiola stuff. <laughs> you know, look how fast I am. Look how great I am. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but now I'm more like tasteful, mm-hmm. you know, and it, if a guy's next to me going, <laughs> they're not going to look like much. But <laughs> like they're fast. They're great. But what are they saying? Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Are they really feeling? Right. It's like know. the BB King kind of. Oh, man. He could just feeling, go. Yeah. Bam. yeah, he get literally <laughs> one note. And they're like, he's gone. And it, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric, right. Eric Clapton's my hero. Yes. Okay. Um, primary. He went through cream. I mean, that cat. I'd love to meet him one day. I mean, he's one of my heroes. One of mine died was Greg Allman. I really want. But I met Devin. So that was pretty cool. His son, really cool, actually. And uh, Eric Gales, and I met him. And, um, and oh, musicians, here's another thing. Don't be chasing down musicians to help you, because they won't. They won't. <laughs> yeah, right. You know why? It's not that they don't want to. Like, whatever level you're at in this business, you still got problems, man. Oh, yeah. Like, you wonder why Warren Haynes didn't get back to me. He was a real... Jerk, I tried to get his autograph. Um, did you go through the day he went through? You know what I mean? Right. Like, like it's never going to be, oh, now that I'm Warren Haynes and now that I'm Tedeschi Trucks and now that I'm this and that, I don't have any more problems. No, it, the problems <laughs> expand as you get more and more fa- famous. Yeah. And they get way more complicated. They do, and then they blame the person for trying to be private. That's, right. That's exactly. like I, I dig Billy Eilish's movie. Like she was like, "Who are all these people?" And they were like, "You know," she was like, "What are they doing here, man? I'm tired. I just did a show." And it was like the record company's cousin and the nephews and nieces that she never even knew. And she's right. so real, Billy Eilish. And she was like, "They had a, her mom had to coax her to go out and do it because she she's like me. I I I'm sorry." Well, I shouldn't even apologize. I can't stand phony junk. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a realist. I'm a really realist guy. And plasticity, I just made that up. Uh, I'll go get a mannequin if I want (laughs) to. Yeah, right. (laughs) I'll go get a robot to say it. (laughs) So I'm a straight shooter. Um, I won't hurt you. I love you. I won't. I'm going to tell you when I'm done. But, yeah. Yeah. But, I I mean, if you want to know, don't ask me. Right, but but the go to guitar. Um, yes. So the SG to me has been, I mean, I have um, uh, PRSs. I have, I love them all, and like I look around the room and go, which one do I play now? Mm. You know, some days. But that SG man to to me, and I was talking to the, uh, we played with a tremendous group yesterday called Root Stutters from Philly, Jamaican. Oh, just get you moving. I was just like, da da da, da. you know, yeah, really. Right. And um, he uses an SG, and we were talking. It's it, it, it Gibson SG to me is very. Um, it's it's multiple. It's it's versatile. It's it, you can get the Les Paul sound. It's lighter. The reason Les Paul didn't like them. Okay, mine's a Gibson SG Les Paul. So they stopped making Les Pauls in 59. Right. Mr. Les Paul, you know, our man. Mm-hmm. Okay. What happened was they, they, he said they're too heavy and stuff. So they bring him an SG and he goes, I can't stand this guitar. Get rid of it. 
And so it was called, mine's not a, just an SG, it's an actual 1961 Les Paul SG. Huh. So there's a difference. Um, I have other SGs, and to be honest with you, they play different. Um, yeah. and, and, and the pickups are different. Um, so I'm a tone freak. Oh, yeah, out there got any amp questions? Because I'm, I'm into tone, man. I, I got Marshalls, Friedman's, Dumbles, Mad Professors. Uh, I got a lot of amps. So if you got any questions about that with pedals and combinations, I like to help you because I pay the price for nine years to find out. I've got questions. Go ahead, man. Uh, but that's going to take a whole other podcast. What, yeah, <laughs> we'll, let's we'll, just we'll come back. Around, we'll get around Well, thanks, that. y'all, for hang, hanging. Well, I, I hope, got one last question, actually. I hope I answered your question okay. And who was that again? Uh, Del Griffith. Del Griffith, I hope I answered your question okay. And thank you. And I appreciate you, Del. Thank you. What is one of the funniest or worst things that ever happened to you on a gig? <laughs> okay. Um, we are opening for a uh, a metal band called Faster Pussycat. <laughs> I don't know if you remember them. Like they were back with um, '80s metal. Okay, they yeah. were like L.A. Guns, uh, California Guns and Roses, Faster Pussycat. Trauma- they had great success in the '80s. And so we're at Aruga Hills in California, and there's a curtain, and the place is, like, immaculate. Like, I mean, I don't know how much they spent on the furniture. And, I mean, we got, like, salmon steak dinner in our dressing room and stuff. We got the treatment, and all the furniture was just beautiful. It was just a beautiful place. And there was a curtain that would open, you know, like, normally you don't have that anymore much. Mm-hmm. So we're all ready to go, man. Like, <laughs> play. And, man, I hit the first chord. Nothing comes out the amp. There's no sound. Oh, no. And I'm like, ah! Because sound check, it was like, you yep. know. I'm like, oh, my Lord. So you got all these people standing there looking at you, man. Like you're dumb. And they're right, right at the stage. So them guys kept jamming. And I'm, like, going crazy on my pedal board. Like, like what is it that? jack chord or a, a chord lo and behold man somebody forgot to plug in the speaker cabinet like from behind and uh, we found it and we finished the show h mac was this last one with black type mojo great sound check everything worked out nothing and it was it was a chord guitar jack but we figured it out real fast um but if on another podcast i can tell you a lot of i from touring and places we've been, I can tell you some doozies. <laughs> I would love to hear them, man. <laughs> we will get to all that more on a different show. We're running out of time for oh, today. Oh, man. This has been a lot of fun, Johnny. Thank you, bro. If you want to hear more about Johnny, please be sure to go onto his website, Johnny B, the storyteller. That is one N G O G O H N Y. Be the storyteller.com. If you want to yeah. hear more about me and what I do, come on now. Come on now. People should. You can. People should. Check us out on. Look what this man's doing, man. Come on. Yeah, he's episode 103. I've had 102 episodes before Look at him. You go. And we, we have a lot of awesome people on this show. Cool. Um, ranging from your local musician to Grammy Award winning, winning artists nice. and international award winning artists. It, there is no shortage of expertise here and stories to be told. I prophesy next time I'll be on this one. I got my Grammy next year. <laughs> I hope that would be really cool. So be sure to check us out everywhere. The Story Podcast. We have a website, CoreyRosenProductions.com, that will be in the works very, very, very soon. And if you want to support us, be sure to share with all your friends. And refer us to musicians that you know. We have a single reviews podcast and uh, ap- album review review show where we review local albums and local uh, singles to give our feedback and help wherever we see fit. With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. And we'll see you guys later. Bye, guys. Peace out.